In this video, I'll show you a different way to configure BGP on iOS XR based routers. So the configuration is going to be done in a smarter way, in a way that will be faster, saves you time and keep your configuration clean and tidy. So let's get started. In this very simple topology, I have two routers, R1 and R2. These are the normal iOS based router that you are probably used to. And then I have a root reflector here. This is an iOS XR based node. And this is where the bulk of the configuration is going to happen. So let's jump into our terminal. So starting with R1, I have configured loopbacks. So my loopback here is 1.1.1.1. For R2 is 2.2.2 .2 and then on the root reflector which is iOS XR based router RR I have configured 10.10.10.10 .10 I already have configured RGP in this case I'm using OSPF to keep things simple I'll just check that my routes are available so I can see that from the perspective of my root reflector, which is XR based, I can see the loopback for root to R1 and loopback for root to R2. So I will start configuring BGP on R1 and R2. And these two routers in this particular example, they're going to be root reflector clients. So RR here, which is my XR based node, is going to be my root reflector. Starting with R1, I will just start by configuring BGP for AS100. I set my router ID. And one thing that I started doing with the iOS based nodes is to actually remove the default RPV4 unicast. So this allows me to have different address families or to configure them separately as we will see in the next session. So now I can configure my neighbor as normal. And I'm configuring my sessions, my IBGP sessions between loopbacks. So my remote AS is 100. And 10.10.10.10, .10 .10 .10, remember, this is the loopback address of the root reflector. And since I'm configuring the BGP sessions between loopbacks, I need to set the update source. So loopback zero. When I'm finished with this part, I can hop into the address family, RPV4 unicast in this case, and then set my neighbor to be active. So here I have activated BGP under address family RPV4 for the root reflector. While we're on this Let's also configure or announce our loopback address. So that's the end of the configuration for Ruto R1. So what have we configured? We configured the, the router ID. We have removed the default RPV4 unicast. We set up our parameters for the neighbor 10.10.10.10 .10 as remote AS100 and we added the update source loop back zero. Then we hopped into the address family and under this address family, we're announcing the loop back address of R1 and we also, the most important part, we're activating this session. We will do the same thing on R2. So basically what I'm going to do here, I'm just going to take the configuration on a notepad, the one that I had for R1, and just change the BGP router ID to 2.2.2.2 .2 and the loopback address that I'm announcing under the address family RPV4. So just paste my configuration, as you can see here. So I have root to BGP 100, the BGP router ID, I'll remove the default RPV4 unicast, and I will also set my neighbor to the root reflector as remote AS100. So it's IBGP, same AS number. And then I also use the update source loopback zero. Then I jump into the address family RPV4. 
I activate my number once again and I announce my loopback address, which is 2.2.2.2 .2 and the mask is slash 32. So this should do it as far as R1 and R2 are concerned. Now, this is really the purpose of this video is to see how, how we can configure BGP in a very efficient way. So starting with the BGP process, I set my router ID as we have seen in normal iOS. So this is not any different here. And you have, and if you have seen some of my previous videos on BGP for iOS XR, the address family that you want to use has to be added at the top. So you do this at this level. Basically what you're saying, you're telling the router that you're going to be using RPv4 unicast. You can add RPv6 and VPNv4. It does not matter if you have them here. If you're not using them, they're not going to take any effect. But if you want to use RPv6 in one of the sessions, then it's important. You need to have it. Otherwise, you're not going to have any sessions coming up. So normally what I would do here is to start configuring my neighbors with all the parameters. And if I'm having a root reflector, this root reflector will have probably 50 or perhaps 60 different sessions to different routers, but the configuration is pretty much the same. And this is where the, the smart thing happens. Here we can just create one template, one generic template that we can apply to all the sessions. So let's create this template and it comes under neighbor group and you can call it whatever you want. I'm calling it lab clients. So under this section, I can start configuring all the common parameters that I will apply to my root reflector clients sessions. So for example, they, I know they will all have the same remote AS number. I know the update source will always be loopback zero for all of them. And then I hop into the address family because this is where I'm setting up my root reflector clients or my sessions. And I will make these peers as root reflector clients. So this is the configuration basically of my neighbor group, which are called lab clients. I will just exit so I can show you effectively what we have configured so far. So we have configured router BGP, BGP router ID. We set the address family or we, we have initiated the address family. Then we hopped into the definition of the neighbor group. We called it lab clients. And we want anything or any sessions that is under or using this neighbor group to use remote AS100, have the update source loop back zero. And under the address family RPv4, we want to set the remote peer as a root reflector client. So I can commit at this point. I'm happy with this, so I'll commit at this point. So, so far I have not created any sessions. I have prepared the sessions. If I hop back to R1, show BGP RPv4 unicast summary, I have no sessions established towards the root reflector. So now I'm going to add my sessions So go back to the BGP process once more. And then I call my neighbors. And I set them to use the neighbor group that I created earlier. So I want them to use the parameters under the neighbor group lab clients. I will commit. And we should shortly see the session coming up under router R1. So here you are, you can see that the session has come up under to R1. I'll do quickly the same for R2. And basically I'm not making much of a change. I'll just set the neighbor and make the neighbor use the neighbor group lab client. I commit 
once more. And I should have the session coming up also. So that's my session coming up at this point. Uh, going back to the root reflector once more. And we go through our configuration. So you can see here that we have the same configuration for neighbor on router one as well as router two. But what if I want something to be done differently for either router one or router two? For example, say I want to have a different weight than the default and I want it only for this neighbor, for router R2. So obviously I cannot go and make the change under the neighbor group because that will affect both neighbors or all peers. When you make configuration under the neighbor, specifically under the neighbor, they will take precedence over whatever is actually configured under the neighbor group. So let's just take a look at the show RP BGP. And in this case, I can see my metrics. I can see the local preference and the weight and the weight for both sessions is zero. I would like to change the weight for R2 to, for example, 50. So you can just go ahead and make the change specifically under the neighbor. That is the way to do it. So I'll just go back in. Under the same process, root to BGP 100. I'll select my neighbor. And to change the weight, I'll need to be under the address family. So under address family RPv4, unicast, here I can set the weight or anything that I want to change that is not specific to the neighbor group. So for example, if I had an RPL root policy under the neighbor group configuration, they will apply to all the peers. And if you want to have a different RPL for specific neighbor, you just apply that RPL under the neighbor specifically as I'm doing here. So in this case, I'll just set the weight to 50 and I will commit. Soft and inbound. So if I take a look at the output of my show RPBGP Unicast, I can see that nothing has changed for R1, but for R2, I can see that the weight is 50. So this is the way of doing a generic or applying a generic configuration to more than one peer and also how to make specific configuration for a given peer. I hope you have found this session informative. And if you have any questions or comments, drop them for me in the section below. And thank you for watching.